Hello everybody, this is Cameron Davis and I'm here to do a key round rundown for you. This is going to be a round from week 2 between Montreal and UCI Gold on train. The round picked out is round 25 where both teams are tied up. Montreal with a streak of victories. Know that UCI are going to be saving. UCI, however, were able to save an op from the previous round, so they have that in their arsenal. Strawberry also finds himself with a little deeper pocket, so he's also going to buy up some P250s for his team. Oftentimes... When a team has one rifle and four pistols, you put the rifle in one spot, and then you stack the rest. And the hope is is that the if the, if the terrorists come this way, the rifle, being an op or an AK, could get a couple of kills, and then in the retake, do as much economic damage as possible. If the terrorists come this way, the pistols could not fully overwhelm them, but at least the stack will do more damage to them, and do as much economic damage as possible. If that were the case, then like the op could run off here and save a second time around. The point is not to win these rounds, the point is to do as much economic damage as possible. And so Montreal are going to take the beginning of this round a little slow, but UCI are going to be throwing a little bit of a curveball into this. Currently, we're going to see Spaz run up and take the op and hold Brown Halls. Montreal, though, a number of their players, are going to be holding angles and waiting to see if they can't find any... They can't find any CTs rushing forward because the other thing that you see is pistol players do many times is rush forward try and steal a couple of AKs which is actually what you see are doing here but instead of rushing they're actually walking and they're walking from the same area that the op is in and so Epsilon once he gets taken out by Spaz he actually doesn't see or hear this little death squad going up around here And so, no, no, he's holding farther back as well, because if there were to be a pistol rush, his rifle would have the advantage at farther range. But because, as I said earlier, if the op was at one spot, in this case here, they would expect A to be stacked with the pistols. And he wants to try and save this AK. He wants to keep any dirty UCI CTs from getting their grubby little hands on it. And so now he's actually going to push forward a little bit and try and watch Pop Dog. But gets completely caught out by these players who are able to pick up some AKs for themselves. This is where this is where F Montreal make a big mistake. Because right where everything, just snapshot right here, where everything currently is, they actually have the advantage onto A site. Spaz is still in the middle of B, rotating up to Z. These players all here, in fact, NFO was right here. If he stayed here and the other two players went in onto the site like this, they have a nice flank onto A. But instead, what they do... Where am I? So what they do is actually line up, like, take the time to set up a smoke take. Which gives UCI time to not only grab those AKs, but also get a reposition. Because they know that the terrorists have to be here. It's the only place that they could be. There is a potential that they could have stuck it onto the A, but that is very, very unlikely. Considering that these two players are kind of holding back. And so, another important thing is what we see here is Jadubi, once these smokes come in, he actually has his own smoke that he picked off of Nono's body, as well as the AK, and that completely shut, shuts down Montreal's play. Because, now they are stuck. They cannot push through this smoke unless they want to be caught out, because with the time it took them to set up that smoke, it gave time for not only Jabodi to reposition up where he is right now, but Spaz with the op to also reposition here, because he can see wrong color he can see here jab can see here they can't just rush through the smoke and because they have they have the man disadvantage they lose one or two players and don't trade with that then that round is completely lost and so now now even though it's unfortunate they have to wait it out and even though it's a better decision that decision ultimately does allow you does put uci with entirety of the tempo and the map control right now they have to wait this smoke out The one option that they have right now is that they could just rush onto the B site. But that's but now these two players are rotating over. Jabodi is actually about to just barely live here, but he does gain information. He does hear them at A main. He does kind of give his position away. You see HHQ is about to miss him with an op shot right there. And that puts Spaz right back to watch A main with the op. 
And right now, it's just a numbers game at this point. NFO does take out Strawberry and does take out Jab, but Spaz and Dagon HHQ does reposition and take out NFO. So, at this point, Yas is in a very, very, very terrible situation for himself. It's one versus two. He knows that it's an op and, a, and an AK versus his AK. Even though Zen doesn't have any armor, he has super, super low health. And he has to go back and get that bomb. So what he's gonna do, he's actually gonna throw an incendiary and then run away. It's not it's not out out of the ordinary for UCI to, after seeing this, expect him to rotate to the B site. But the one biggest thing that uh that you can do to lose a two versus one is to split up or we call it out rotating. So they're just gonna stick together and wait to either have Yas Yas walk into their um, crosshairs. Or say he does run to the B site, which he does have time for, just barely run to the B site, get the bomb plan, and then just two v one retake. At this point, they've already won the round, because with this, they've only invested what is it, twelve hundred dollars with the P two fifties, and they've already killed four of the members. So even even if Yas were able to one v two clutch this out, they they've already done more economic damage than they reasonably should have. But Yas, while coming back, throws a flash, stomps his feet around. And then Zen kind of sees him walking through and easily able to take him out. So, hopefully you learned something from this. Either mistakes to not make or some interesting ideas that you can implement into your own game. Be it team play or just solo queue matchmaking. But, either way, hope you had fun. See you next time.